Hey, I'm uh, Alex Krauss with uh, JA Air Center up in, in Aurora, Illinois. Um, we are the Cessna dealer for Illinois and Wisconsin, and um, I'm here today at the Mount Vernon Light Sport Expo with uh, Cessna's newest foray into the training market, the 162 Skycatcher. Um, for the past year and a half or so, I've been bebopping around our, our territory, Illinois and Wisconsin, and, and this guy have accrued about 80, 85 hours in it and been having entirely way too much fun doing it. Um, but uh, our, our flight school currently operates uh, four of these um, right now and, and we almost can't keep them on the ground. They're, they're getting about 40, 50, 60 hours a month month out of them. And, and uh, you know, from, from a student standpoint, they're for $100 an hour, $110 an hour, you can rent a brand new airplane with glass panel avionics and you know, something that hasn't been beaten up by, by renters over the past 30, 40 years. So uh, from a renters and a training standpoint, it's, uh, it's, it's a really good option. So um, I like to tell people it's a, it's a good starter airplane for your, for your uh, privates or light sport or whatever rating you want to go. And it's also a great finishing airplane uh, for the guys whose medicals have expired and, and uh, you know, want to want to move into something that they can, they can continue to enjoy out beyond um, uh, what their, their private, pilot, pilot, private pilot's license could, uh, could offer. Um, but, you know, little basics about the plane, fixed pitch prop, 100 horsepower Continental 0200 engine, uh, which is a D model engine, uh, an updated version of what's been on the 150s and 152s uh, for, for a number of years. And then uh, we got the Garmin G300 avionics, uh, which is similar to the G3X, which is available for the home built, home built guys. Well, inside the cockpit, we've got uh, the, the Garmin G300 system uh, with the SL40. Uh, nav, I'm sorry, uh, radio, and the Garmin GTX 327 transponder. Um, the, the avionics system is fully integrated. Uh, you can load, you can load frequencies from from your MFD. Look up waypoints, um, weather, XM weather, uh, pretty much anything you want to know about the airport you're going to, en route, airports, and. Uh, the, the greatest thing about the system is, is how easy it is to use. Um, if, you've, if you've ever used a Garmin 430 or a 530 or anything, anything in the Garmin line, you can, you can pick, up, pick up on, on this system here um, very easily and, and with very little transition training. Um, all your primary flight instruments are on the, the PFD, or primary flight display, and all of our um, moving map, waypoint information, frequencies, um, weather, terrain, obstacles, everything, all that is, is displayed on the multifunction display. Uh, you do have an option of splitting the screen where you have your HSI, airspeed, altitude, compass on the top, and then you can uh, put approach plates or your moving map or any number of things uh, down on the bottom as well. Um, Seats don't move. We're uh, since we're light sport, we're you know very very limited with our, our operating envelope. The seats are, are stationary, but we, what we do have is a is a, a knob down here that will move the rudder pedals forward, fore and aft. So I'm about six foot one, and you can see when I'm in here, I get these rudder pedals all the way all the way back and nice big knob you can kick with your foot. We get these rudder pedals all the way back and I got about three or four inches uh, there for, for, for clearance with my knees. Um, pretty straightforward panel, not cluttered. Uh, everything is very well presented. All your, uh, all your, your light switches, avionics master, uh, the strobe nav and landing lights are all, all uh, Wayland LEDs. Uh, parking brake operates just like on a 172. You hold the toes down, pressurize them, pull it out. Uh, we do not have a fuel selector. We have a fuel cutoff. Um, two tanks, 12 gallons, one on each side. Uh, there is a cross feed here, and our our um, fuel gauges are are uh, line of sight right there as well. Bubble type. Um, cabin heat probably overkill for, for what we need, but it gets nice and warm in here in the winter. Uh, two Wemo, two Wemax up here, and uh, the frozen uh, sunbites.
do have a nice little storage spot in the middle here. I'm not sure if you can, can see it there. A uh, couple of cup holders. Um, I usually stick the battery pack for my for my headset in here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can put your phone in here as well. Uh, your checklist easily accessible right there. Um, and there's one of those on both sides, map pouch. Uh, the the flaps are operated uh, with a Johnson bar right in the middle. There's there's three positions. So one position. Full flaps up here, um, and you know, with full flaps, you're looking at about 50, 55 knots uh, approach speed there as well. Uh, one thing, one one uh, interesting piece of, about it is the way the flaps are oriented. Um, when you're on the ground in gusty conditions, you're going to leave the plane overnight. You want to put the flaps all the way down, uh, leave them down like that. Otherwise, you you're liable to have them flopping around. Uh, since they are cable operated, not electric or anything like that. Uh, we do have a uh, pretty ample storage space in the back. I'm sorry, the operating limitations are 50 pounds in the back, so, um, but it allows you to put, you know, big, big, big items in there. So, you know, you got a 30 pound dog and, and he's got his big container, you put them right back in there, he'd be more than happy. LED lights uh, lighting up the panel. All in all, uh, pretty pretty Spartan interior, and, and you know not not a whole lot of frills and, and um, extra stuff in there. It's it's what you need, and, and not a whole lot more. Uh, so, you know, in, a, in a training environment, it's it's a phenomenal airplane. Uh, I I usually flight plan for about 110 knots, uh -huh. um, and I get about four four and a half gallons an hour out of the out of the tanks. Um, Full fuel payload is only about 100, 350, so you're uh, you're kind of limited. But you leave a little bit of fuel off. I, we never really put more than half tanks in the plane, uh, so you get about two hour leg that way, two three hour leg with your with your reserve there, uh, 45 minute reserve. Uh, yeah, so I, I've I've done a couple of pretty long cross countries. I've gone. Uh, Come from Orlando up to Chicago uh, a couple times, and the first time it took me ten and a half hours, and I was dodging weather the whole way, and up having to spend the night in uh, in Auburn. Uh, but the second time, I made two stops and made it all the way up to Chicago in uh, six and a half hours. Um, so that was that was pretty smooth. I had a, the tailwinds are real nice. It's, uh, it's it's comfy inside. The seats are seats are reasonably comfortable. Sit on for for a few hours. Um, I have, a, I have a lot of fun in it. Short field takeoffs, soft field takeoffs are, are a breeze, stalls are a non-event. Um, visibility is phenomenal. You, you can see just about right under the airplane. Yeah, and low door sills and, and you know it almost the, the, can, the whole cabin. I'm sorry, the whole fuselage kind of has an angle to it, right. so it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So when you look out, you're, you get to look almost directly straight down. I mean, I'm I'm six one, and I, you know, I've never I haven't bumped my head. I know even in the the 182s, in the in the 206s, and that I fly, I, uh, you know, if I'm moving around or adjusting, I with my headset every once in a while, I'll bump the top of my head on, on the ceiling. But, uh, for for how small it is, the the interior of the cabin is is uh, is quite quite spacious. Check, 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 check. Can you hear okay? Check, one, two. Check, check, loud and clear. Good. All right. Mixture, we'll lean it out a little bit for the ground. All right. Leaning light switch off, strokes off. That's basically what we just did is with external power. Now, there's so many different ways to start this thing. All right, taxi check. We're going to check our brakes. We'll check our flight instruments as we're taxiing out. We'll go over there in the corner and we'll do our run-up over there. Okay. You want to hang on to that, yes, sir. We'll leave the doors open for now. But if you see, see how I'm using the rudders? Not getting much. you got to actually... They're, they're very ineffective. Now I'm using full right rudder. So if I want to turn right, I'll just tap that right brake a little bit. You want to try? But if 
you hold it, we'll just come to a stop. Oh, sorry. Kind of got to tap it a little bit. I'll gotcha. give it a little more power. So what you want to do is use the full rudder. Okay. Then brake is needed. Okay. Thank that you. way, that way we can save the brakes. Okay. We'll straighten up there. <laughs> we'll look at the windsock down there. Well, that one's kind of showing it from that way. So is that one. So we'll point that way. That one's showing it from that way. You know what? We'll just point this way. Get our nose wheel straight. We're going to power about 900. Hold the brakes. We'll put the parking brake on. Give it a little power. Look outside at the wheel. Verify it's not moving. Yep. We're still going to hold the brakes, but just an added precaution there. All right. Parking brake set. Brakes apply. Parking brakes on. Basically just what I just did. Rudder pedals and seat belts adjust and secure. Are you comfortable with your rudder pedals and your seat belt? Yes. Okay, primary interior, uh, well, cabin doors, we'll go ahead and close them. Now when you pull it closed, we don't slam them, we just pull it up too until you hear it click. Now push your lever forward. Okay, kind of bump on your door, make sure to verify it's locked. Close and latch. Okay, now you want to reach down and put your secondary latch right behind your left knee. Push that forward. Push forward. Okay. Flight controls, free and correct. We'll go through the whole range of motion. Look outside, make sure they're doing what they need to be doing. All right, our rudders are free. Not a lot of down around. No, not a whole lot. <laughs> not much at all. Uh, flight instruments, we'll go ahead and check. We'll go ahead and accept this. It's VFR, so it doesn't have to be up to date. All right, flight instrument, PFD, verify no red X's in our PFD. We have no red X's. Yes. Altimeter is set. Well, we got to get data first. Spirit Airport information, Sierra 16540 weather. Wind 060 at 5, visibility 10, 6000 scattered, ceiling 10,000 broken. Temperature 23, 2.13, altimeter 3003. 3003, so we have to hit Barrow. 3003, press Barrow again. Now our altimeter set and the field elevation is 463, so we're within 75 feet. Uh, heading indicator showing known headings too. And I checked all the other flight instruments on the way over here, showing the bank and the ball to the outside of the turn. Uh, engine indicating system. So we'll turn this one down here over to engine indicating. We'll check the parameters, no red X's. Altimeter set, fuel quantity indicators, about a little more than half tank. A little more on that one. And over here on this side, we're right at a half tank for ground. They just get a float up here. Yeah, pretty much. And when you take off, you're climbing, it tends to show lower. So when, like the other day, uh, I was with the owner of the plane. We had plenty of fuel, but I wanted to point something out to him. We were climbing out, and it, the ball was all the way on the bottom. He's seen that. He's like, oh! <laughs> I said, now level out. Give it, a, give it a couple minutes. I said, now look at him. And it was up above a quarter of a tank. So... All right, fuel primers in and locked. Mixture control full rich. Autopilot we don't have. Elevator trim switch, we'll set that for takeoff. Have control right here on your... Oh, right on the stick. Right on the stick with your thumb. Very nice. We'll put it right to takeoff. All right, throttle. Here's our RPMs right here. We'll go to 1700. Still holding the brakes even though we've got the parking brake on. There we go. 1720. Go ahead and turn your magneto to the left. Watch the drop. Back to both. We had about 20 drop. Go ahead and two clicks to the left and check the right magneto. All right, we'll watch the drop. About 30. Back to both. All right. What's an acceptable limit on that? No more than 150 on either magneto and no more than 50 difference between them. We had 20 on one, 50 on, or 30 on the other. Uh, that's good. All right, engine indicators. Everything's looking good. Amps are back down to zero. Volts are in the green. Oil PSI, or uh, 
PSI is in the green, temp's in the green. And take off. This is our carb heat, our EGT, exhaust gas temperature. All right, we'll pull the carb heat. We'll watch the carb heat temp go up and the RPMs come down. All right, both are responding like they should. Back in, back to normal. All right, amps and volts. Volts are green, amps are back down close to zero. Enunciators, we would be right in here if we had any. We'll bring it all the way out and we'll check the idle. Anyway, I don't, one thing that's not on the checklist I like to check is carb heat at idle. Because when we come in for a landing, we're going to have carb heat on, we're going to pull the power. So the carb heat decreases your RPM, so I want to make sure that we're going to have a RPMs when we come in to land. Alright. The carb heat's uh, off and land. Uh, just for, for low, low RPM settings. Okay. Uh, then you run the risk of carb ice. If we pull the power back a little bit, our temp should actually drop a little bit. Well, here. Well, it's not making much of a difference today. Okay. Tom frequencies, we've got ground. We've got ATIS in the backup. We have Sierra. GPS flight plan. We're not going to set one. We'll set one and come back if we need to. Transponder. We're on one two zero zero, and it's on standby. When we get moving, this one on automatically comes on. If not, we have to verify and press altitude. But it'll go back to standby when we're on the ground. Wing flaps up to ten degrees. We have. I like to take off with ten degrees in here. And. Actually, I like to take off with them zero degrees. I'm sorry, 10 degrees is recommended. But you'll see in a heartbeat how much power this thing has, and it has no need for the flaps on takeoff. It'll get off the ground. It's it's impressive. All right, transponder wing flaps, nav light switch is on. Strobe light switch. You want to go ahead and turn the strobe light switch on. BRS we don't have. And parking brake. We'll take parking brake off. All right. Okay. There, it's rolling. All right, and that's what we're going to do on takeoff. Flaps 0 to 10, carb heat's going to be off, throttle's going to be full, mixture's going to be rich. Maintain directional control. Heels on the floor with our rudders, no brakes. Elevator control, we're going to lift our nose at 50 knots. Climb out is 60 to 75 knots. If we just put that nose just barely above the horizon, it usually gets us right at 75, and we don't stare at that. All right, wing flaps, if we're using them, we'll wait till we get about 200 feet AGL before we take them out and make sure that we've got a good climb speed and a positive rate of climb. <laughs> it turns really well if you know what you're doing with the... Yeah, you'll see a lot of students out here doing this, just like I did. <laughs> well, that's what it takes. That's how I did when I first started. I'll go ahead and give them a call. Clear ground, Skycatcher 70258 at Air Associates, ready for taxi, departing southwest, information Sierra. Skycatcher 70258, clear ground, runway 8 left, taxi via Echo. 8 left via Echo, 70258. Alright, we got our clearance to taxi down to the runway. Clear left, clear right. And once we get out here, we'll back the power down so we don't get going too fast. Got vents going on up here. Yeah, we've got one on each side. Counterclockwise opens it, clockwise closes them. It's pretty comfortable for, uh, you've got a lot of room. Yeah, you're right, it's, it's fairly wide and very high. You don't right. have a, a feel of being too closed up. <laughs> right. Now, here's our airspeed indicator right here. Tells us how fast we're going through the air, not over the ground. We've got 30 knots of headwind. Our ground speed is going to be 30 knots slower than what that says. Our attitude indicator in relation to the, the ground, the sky, the horizon. Our, our, our bank indicator here, you got 10, 20, 30, 45. We don't want to ever get past 45. Altimeter tells us how high we are above sea level, not above ground. Our turn coordinator, the incline.
manometer is right here, the ball. Uh, this kind of replaces the old turn coordinator. More or less you've got the, your wings right there. If you want to hold a standard rate turn, there's a magenta luber line that comes out. You hold it on that first little white tick mark there. That's a standard rate turn. Heading indicator obviously tells us which way we're pointed. Kind of like a the old fighter technology head up this way. They just put it right there. It's got all the information. Yeah. Really, really well designed. Well, the problem is a lot of people like to stare at it. And they, I try to teach them to fly the nose. The nose is going to tell you before those will. Alright. Get in a 45 here. We can see down the runway, downwind, base, and final. Before we take off, I like to do lights, camera, action. Get all of our lights on. Cameras, our transponder. It's on altitude right now. Squawk and VFR, 1200. Action, everything to do with the fuel. Primer's in and locked. Fuel shutoff's on. Mixture's rich. Our beat's off. We've got fuel in the tanks. Now we're ready to go. We'll call tower. Let them know. Spirit Tower, Skycatcher 70258 at 8 left, ready for takeoff. Skycatcher 70258, Spirit Tower, right turn southwest on approved, from the 8 left, cleared for takeoff. 8 left, cleared for takeoff, with a right turn out to the southwest, 70258. Alright, lined up on the center line. Heading indicator showing the right heading. Even showing our center line there. Very nice. All right. Smooth transition from idle to full power. We'll start using right rudder to maintain directional control. There's full power. Airspeed's alive. Everything's green. 50 knots. We're going to bring our nose wheel up. So we'll start lifting off. There we go. Too easy, huh? Very impressive. Trim it down a little bit. So now we're going to control our airspeed with our pitch. Right. So if we hold our nose right there, it usually gets us right around that 75. If you want to look at our checklist, we can do our in-route climb checklist. In-route climb, uh, is airspeed 65 to 75. Okay. Right on. Uh, throttle control full. Makes your control rich. Okay. That's about it. And once we get up to cruise, we'll set that. We'll get, we'll get up to about 1,100 feet here. We'll make our right turnout. What's our rate of climb about now? Right about now, we're doing about 1,500, or is that 1,000? 1,000. Oh, there it is, good. All right, 1,100, clear right. We'll go ahead and turn right. You wanna fly? You have the controls? I have the controls. You have the controls. We'll keep that right rudder in. We'll climb to 2,500. We'll keep on turning down this way. Keep your bank going. We'll turn to heading uh, 220. Handles very well. It is. Very neat. Very I like neat. the uh, control system. Uh, I guess uh, I'm not used to flying, so it's okay. I don't have to transition. There you go. Go ahead and level up. We'll hold this heading. As you can see, it doesn't take somebody really strong to control this thing. Those, those controls are real touchy. They are. Like I said, we want to focus on the nose and keep that nose just barely above the horizon. A little okay. higher. A little higher. A little higher. Right about there. All right. If we just hold it right there, that should give us our 75 knots that we were looking for to climb. Yep. A little fast there. About 81 right now, but that's okay. We'll keep that right rudder in. Are we still uh, trimmed up for takeoff? Yeah, let go. Kind of holds it there. Very nice. There comes our altitude right there. We'll bring our nose down. Okay. Looking outside. We climbed a little more than what we wanted to there. But now we have to hold that nose.
nose down. We'll trim the nose down a little bit. Now our airspeed's up above 90. We'll bring our power back 23. Okay. What's a good cruise speed? What, what do we look I, I like to use 23, in between 23 and 25. But see, I'm holding that nose down right now because we've got it trimmed for takeoff. Right, I noticed that. See if we go ahead and trim that nose down. So trim wheel, for, trim forward there. Forward. Yeah. You can, oh, I see. You can up for down now. Yeah, right. and I, I don't even look at it. I just look outside. Okay. Let go. See that nose creeping up? Push it back down and stabilize it and then trim the nose down two clicks. Let go. Now it's kind of going far. down, so... But you want to stabilize it, bring it back to where you want it, right? stabilize it, and then make your adjustment, then let go again and see which way it wants to go. All right. Spirit Tower okay. Challenger 605, our box is a late right. Our VSI is that little yeah, triangle. We want to keep that right inside that box, but we don't want to stay there. Right. Okay. So pick a spot out there, like they used to say, and try to get to it, huh? Yeah, you just see a little water tower down there. Okay. You just head straight for that. Your heading will probably stay the same. We're about 90. Is that where you want to be? Yeah, that's plenty. Plenty fast enough. <laughs> It'll, uh, we'll go ahead and set the power up a little higher. We'll set it to 2400. Actually, we'll do 2500. We might have to trim the nose down a little bit. There, there's about 2,500. Once it's leveled out, it'll cruise 95 to 100 knots, so it'll keep up with a, a 172 Skyhawk. Yeah, we're now, aren't we? Yeah. But the main focus is you want to watch that nose. Yep. The nose is going to tell you everything you need to know. All of us CFIs, we sit over here and we watch the nose. And then we give it a second or two, then we look at hold at the uh, instruments and point out what they're doing wrong. Oh, I'm climbing right. like a bandit, aren't I? Right. Yeah, I'll trim that nose down a little bit. Now, it might get a little bumpy over here because of the hills. All right, it makes it more fun. <laughs> Now you fly with uh, aileron mostly, do you, what is the uh, rudder uh, control? Well, the rudder is going to keep your turns coordinated. Right. So, you look at the nose out there, if we just kind of rock it back and forth. Yep. See how that nose just kind of flails around? Right. Well, if we use the rudders, you don't feel like you're moving around. We'll use the rudders. Delta 820, echo turn right, heading 150, runway 8 right, cleared for We could hit all these bumps. Five zero nine eight eight right, cleared for But it keeps you feeling like your butt's staying right in that seat. Exactly. And if you do it perfect, if you can find some smooth air to do it in, keep that ball in the center, put a cup of coffee up here, you won't spill it. <laughs> Go ahead, try some turns. Remember, left turn, left rudder. Oh, <laughs> it's touchy, isn't it? There is. All right, go ahead and turn out to the right. So you're rolling out of a left turn into a right one, so you want to use right rudder. As soon as you put pressure to the right, you want to use that rudder. Okay. The trick in this plane is you knowing how much rudder to use. It doesn't take much. Okay. All right, another left turn. Yeah. <laughs> Not an F4. So let off that rudder. There you go. Okay. So from there, I get the ball back in the middle. And it doesn't take much. I see yeah, that climbing like crazy. Though. See that little green sight? Yep. That's where we're going to end up, according to what the wind is doing to us. So we've got a little bit of a right, uh, left crosswind. Okay. So that sight's a little bit to the right. Okay. Holding this heading, we're going to end up over there a little bit. Can you just creep to the left a little bit? Oh, it doesn't matter if we're trying to go there or there. We're just kind of going through the turns right now. Okay. So let's turn out to the west. All right, you got it. contact St. Louis departure. Good day. Good departure. 8200 Echo. Good day. But as you can see, it's a lot cheaper of an airplane for, uh, to rent. Oh, it's great. It's a lot cheaper to rent this aircraft, and yet the airspeeds will keep up with the 172 all day long. I noticed that. I mean, we were, you know, with my lack of skill, we're between 90 and 105. Well, I pulled so the power back a little bit on that uh, one. It's uh, really good performance, really. Yeah, I mean, we can even we can even put our crew.
cruise performance up to 2750 on the RPMs. Okay. And as long as we're at 25, so we can cruise right up there with the Skyhawk real easy if we put the power up to the upper end of the cruise. We're right at 99 or 102 right now. Right. So if you only had two people going somewhere, I would take this. Rather than an old 172. Yeah, we're, we're uh, clipping right along here. Challenger 5, Romeo and Papi going to the Don't ask me where we are, though. Romeo 5, Romeo Ah, there's the Lavity Stacks right here. And Washington's right up over around the corner, and Spirit's right back over here. Here, I'll turn the map page on for you. Turn right, heading 150. That's very cool. So we can change the range. Bouncing around. This thing's a lot more sensitive to the up and down drafts because it's so much lighter. It's so much more responsive to control inputs and the wind. It's good and bad. I mean, on a rough, windy day, it might not be desirable, but for, for flying around sightseeing, the size of these windows, I can lean over and I can look straight down in between my wheel and the, and the, the fuselage. I noticed that the view is spectacular. It is really good. But yeah, I do like this uh, stick control. It's uh, yeah. Now, if you grew up with a yoke, it may not be. The first time easy. I got in here, I was trying to twist on it. It's just back and forth. And Very nice. So on our map here, where the heck are we going? We're just <laughs> headed out to the west. Washington's over there. Okay. Spirit's over behind us on our right tail, right side. Oh, oh you're fine. What we could do is press this button here. Okay. Turns that into a cursor button. So I could scroll down here and highlight Class Bravo's airspace, and I know I need to stay below 3,000 inside that ring. Okay. You put a flight plan on there too? Yeah. We could uh, go direct back to KSUS, and it's already in there. Press Enter. Enter. Oh, not yet. And it'll draw us a line that we need to take. Falcon A10 Echo, contact St. Louis departure. Good day. I like this. This is very nice. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and turn to a, a, a south heading. So what you want to do, whatever your bank angle is, yep. half of that, if you hold 20 degrees of bank, 10 degrees ahead of your headings when you want to start your rollout. Where are we heading now? You're at 10 degrees of bank. You got too much left rudder, though. Okay. So let's keep hold that bank at 20 degrees. Okay. So 10 degrees ahead of south, right there. Let's roll out. Okay. You'll end up right close to your heading. We rolled out a little bit quick on that one. Okay. So let's turn to the right. Turn to heading of west, which is right there. Got it. So bank 20 degrees. Hold that 20 degrees of bank. Runway 8 right, intersection Charlie, cleared for takeoff. Just trying to get a feel for what that is. It, it, it's, it's a little bit bouncy. It takes some getting used to. So keep that bank in there. Okay. There, 10 degrees right there. Roll out. Right on your heading. Too easy, huh? I can see how this is a great training plan. <laughs> great training plan uh, aircraft. Well, everything you need is all right here. Where the bigger displays, everything's spread out. Your engine instruments are all over here. Actually, they are over here now on this one. Yeah. Um, the six pack, the steam gauge, you've got instruments everywhere. So your scan's a lot wider. Where this one, you're just right there. As long as you don't stare at it. Right. Remember, we want to look outside. Try not to. <laughs> I know you'll kick me if I do. So. <laughs> Let's turn left heading 180. Let's bank 20 degrees. There we go, it's 20 degrees. When we turn, the steeper we turn, the more back pressure we have to apply. Okay. We're losing our vertical component of lift, replacing it with horizontal. So and, and, and as a result, we have to put a little back pressure. Okay. Where do you want to go now? Well, south, but that's okay. Sorry, we went too far. All right, let's go ahead and turn left to 090, which would be east. Afternoon, Spirit 8400 Echo will be ready at the end. Falcon 8400 Echo Spirit Tower, hold short of runway A right for release. 
Hold short, 8 right, 400 echo. Record airport information, Sierra 165. Right. Go ahead and turn left, uh, 360. easy to handle though, isn't it? Yeah, surprisingly, I don't know where I'm going here. Ah, uh, 360 would be right there. I'm just not used to the uh, rudder uh, pressure. It takes a lot of getting used to. I'm not sure if I'm doing enough or not. I fly Skyhawks a lot, and then I hop in here and I do the same thing. I'm really hitting those rudders a lot. On takeoff, it's easy because you don't think about it, you just it on the center line with more or less right rudder. Right. Falcon eight four zero zero. Pretty much on takeoff, you can throw your left foot away. Turn left, heading three. I wouldn't advise it, but <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> Apart from all things, it's cheaper than the other planes. Right. And it's it's got a lot nicer instruments, avionics, and it. it it's brand new. But a lot of the other the older ones were the old gauge type, but this is all digital. a lot cheaper to fly this. I think it's more fun. You can see a lot more. Yeah, the visibility is outstanding. It's a great little airplane and it's not that extremely popular right now so a lot of people they can, when they want to fly they can schedule it any time. Or the other planes you might have to pick a different time. Where this one's usually available. Now you can teach light sport in this, and uh, could you teach regular uh, private as well? You can teach light sport and private pilot. Um, I actually had one student that was almost ready for his check ride, and it had to come down for maintenance for some reason. Um, he ended up finishing in the 172, but he was building his commercial time. It didn't matter what he flew as long as he was flying. So he was taking this all the time, sightseeing, building up his commercial cross-country time. For a little, quite a bit cheaper, actually. You get there in the same amount of time. This engine is the same engine that's in a 150. Okay. Um, and they can carry, they can hold a lot more weight because they're not a light sport. Well, the same engine in this little bitty light airplane, it performs twice as well as the 150. And just about as good, almost as good, if not the same, as a 172 Skyhawk. And you're not poking each other in your elbows right. the whole time. They, I think this has actually got more room I'm than really a 172. A, I'm really impressed with it. Citation 320 Bravo Papa. All right. Tower turn right heading 150. Okay, I have the controls. Thank you, sir. Not our turn our, map, our page down here to waypoint. Look at the zero uniform right transition approved. Ground control. We can press this in. Three, zero, Get a uh, cursor and we'll toggle down to ground. Press enter and watch here. Puts it in the radio for you. Oh, excellent. There's a lot of, lot of stuff, so much stuff in here that we don't even get into it with private students until they've been at it for a little bit because there's, there's just so much you can do in here. Your primary uh, navigation is uh, GPS. Oh, yeah. Pretty much in here. Or you can hold a heading. Uh, Sorry. These are the runway extended center lines. So you can track your runway center line from way out here. Wow. The tower sky catcher 70258 is about 12 west. Full stop air associates with Sierra. Sky catcher 70258 Spirit Tower makes straight in approach from the 8 left. Straight in for 8 left, 70258. Okay. We can get ready for our descent. Twin we, seven zero Mike with we never got above 3,000, so I never yeah. leaned it. Right, so our mixture's right, rich, right. power's as desired, I'm sorry. Altimeter, the altimeter setting's the same. Right. Wing flaps is desired. Our first, we have to be below 100 knots for our first setting of flaps. Then we subtract 15 each time. So it goes 185 and 70. And then we're gonna pull our carb heat before we pull our power. Our heat is right there, 53 degrees. If we pull our power a little bit, I actually went up. <laughs> well, there's low pressure in there at that time. Yeah. And what happens then is inside the venturi of the uh, carburetor, 
you can actually get a temperature drop. But that's actually showing an increase. So we can see the runways, but if it was a hazy day, we could track our center line there. The green line there. Very nice. It's starting to get a little bumpy. About noon it usually does. About 3 o'clock it calms down a little bit. Early morning and late evening are usually the best time for first time flyers. Because it's usually really smooth and they can tell what's going on with the plane and they know that they're the one doing it. You don't have to worry about all the, all the bumps knocking you around and trying to figure out what caused what. It's pretty plain and simple when it's nice and smooth. Got a wind, little, little wind indicator there that tells us what the wind's doing. Oh, that's great. That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. No, oh, it's awesome. I love it. It helps students understand a little more, too. It really does, because it puts it right in front of your face. But as you can see, we're kind of pointed that way, and we're tracking that runway. That's because the wind's coming from that side, and we're crabbed into it a little bit. Go ahead and bring our nose up a little bit, and slow our airspeed down. And we'll get our first set of flaps. Now, flaps, you don't want to hold the button. You just grab a hold of it, pull up, first click. There's our first set of flaps. Now we'll shoot for 85 knots because that's our next flap setting. Alright, 85 or less, we'll get our second set of flaps. Get 70 real quick. We're going to have to put a slip in too. There oh, are our air six. Nine the wind's more from that side, so we'll put that wing down. down. Air six, spare tower post seat inbound between the runways for the plate pad. Pull left rudder. Hold our airspeed with our tips. Please pad air six. There's our first light of our glide slope. All right, we maintain the center line with the ailerons and keep our nose straight with the rudder. Runway eight left. Slowly start and bringing our nose up. Line up at point eight left, point three sixty nine. Keep fighting it off with that nose up. There we go. Very nice. Yeah, we get to make the first taxi. Anyway. Skycatcher 258, taxi to ramp via echo, remain on this frequency. Back to the ramp via echo, this frequency 70258, thanks. You just don't want to do your run up with the doors open. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it needs a little power to help it through the turn. Same thing in a Skyhawk, too. We'll just go up to the hangar and park right up by the hangar. Probably just put it back in there. Securing the airplane, brakes as needed, throttle control, we'll come back to idle, we're there. Parking, uh, parking brake we're not using. Electrical equipment, we'll leave our nav lights on for now until we get it off. Avionics master switch goes off, headsets aren't going to work anymore. 